one of the world's largest esports organizations asked me to make their Rainbow Six skin in real life. And you already know we had to send it. The blank print turned out pretty awesome, but there was one problem. I've never played Rainbow Six Siege before. Oh my God, we're in Copper 3. And with my ego crushed, I grabbed my Bondo, gloves, and mask, and the piece to work on. Overall, this print was really solid. However, there was a couple of problem areas that we needed to smooth out. And that is where we get to step number one. In step one, we're doing all of the paint prep. So we're starting with the Bondo that I mentioned. And then once that dries, we get to sanding. Once we get to a smooth surface, then we're gonna wipe off all of the excess dust and for me, I like to run it underwater. Once it dries, then it's time to hit it with the sandable and fillable primer. This is a two-in-one product. It's amazing. I use it in absolutely every video. Let that dry overnight, and it's time to sand it again. This is going to be our main painting surface, and now we need to do our base coat of primer. For this one, I chose a black primer since this is going to be a very dark painting for the most part, at least for the background, and black primer is kind of my go-to. And that brings brings us to step number two, putting down the base of everything. And I started out here drawing out the full design and I realized quickly that that was a complete waste of time. There is so many details and extra little things on this design that drawing it all out and then trying to make a smooth gradient and miss some of like the details and stuff like that would be a total waste of time and probably not be able to get that smooth surface. So what we did is we did a smooth gradient from teal to almost black. I, I mixed in some purples and some blues to basically just kind of make that smooth and not have a full black on the one end. Alrighty, so now that we've got the base coat down, we got this back side here, nice little gradient there. We also did this little line here where you can see a nice little gradient as well. I'm liking the way that's feeling. Once this is all dry and kind of set, let's go back here to this um, and start putting some of the, uh, uh, the background buildings and stuff like that. And uh, this is where we can kind of have a lot of fun with it. Um, so. We're going to go in and we're going to lightly sketch this out again. I know we already did once, um, but we're going to lightly sketch out again uh, and then go in with uh, like a nice dark green over this. And then we're going to start putting some highlights and stuff like that and then hit it with all those like little lights and stuff. So this should be really, really fun uh, and this should be really, really cool. So let's uh let's get into it with the base done it's time to move on to step number three starting the details and the first thing we're going to work on is the city skyline it's got a whole bunch of little detail and all of these little lights for here my thought process is basically get a base color down kind of smooth that into another color and then just dab on a whole bunch of little lights and then we can basically go back and add in some extra details and stuff like that, like highlights and shadows. And then I ultimately do a little bit of a green wash over all of it. With the skyline out of the way and done, it's time to move on to the next little checklist that we have and that is the logo and on this design it's kind of like glitched out or like out of focus and i decided to basically use this technique of just brushing back and forth and then using a bunch of different colors greens and teals and whites and stuff like that and just kind of building those on top of each other and at the end of it i think it looks pretty accurate Now we're going to move on to, I guess, step four, which is the character. And this is where the bulk of my time went into. I probably spent almost 15, 20 hours working on the character. I kind of went back and forth and I tried a few different things to like get the sizing right. At the end of the day, I just freehanded it and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. But to start, after we kind of get the rough idea of the outline, I then put a base of white or off white. And, and this basically just helps so we don't have to build up as many colors 
on top of our dark base you know that dark base is great for the skyline and a lot of the other things on the piece however the character needs to be really bright and so we do a white even base first and then through this time lapse you will see how i build up colors i start with a mid-tone color and then i build up highlights and shadows from there and then at the end of it all we do uh, our outlines and details and stuff and you'll see just how satisfying it is to see this thing to come together i absolutely loved it it's so so freaking fun to do this stuff because of the way it just comes from absolutely nothing and just blocks of color to just fully come to life. Now with the main parts of the character out of the way, that looks pretty cool, but it's missing a lot of the extras like the legs and the body. So we have to go back and add those in now that the main part of the character is done and for the legs and stuff we did the same thing we started out with a drawing we do a white base and then we do the colors on top of it Through that time lapse, you also saw just adding some other little details like the gun and things like that. But now we're nearing the end of this piece and we just got to put the finishing touches on. So we've focused a lot on the middle area, but we haven't really touched the magazine and like the site and stuff like that. And that's because the skin doesn't really hit those areas. So we're just going to do a simple dry brush of gray, brown, and then hit it with some gilding wax at the end as well just to really make things come alive and give them some good character. Once we finish it all, I seal it with a matte varnish and then we are left with this. This ended up being one of my most intensive painting pieces so far. It's that and this AK behind me. I absolutely love doing these types of pieces, but they take a very, very long time. I hope you guys enjoyed today's build and be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more of this type of content. We'll see you guys in the next one.